My name is Sammy, and this is my husband, Paul, and this is my little sister, Shannon, and this is my dad, our dad, Randy. Wow. So how awesome yeah. is it to get, that, get to be in a van with your whole family? I think it's incredible. Some days in the RV, we would probably disagree with that, but um, we, for the most part, we've always done everything together as a family. Um, so, like, we were homeschooled, and we've always done ministry together as a family. So, for us, this is just, like, another extension of just getting to be with our family and do what God's called us to do. So... It's awesome. We love it. So for Dad, like, were you in music before the band? I actually started the band in 1998. <laughs> <laughs> uh, went through a few people, and uh, as they got older, and, and I just brought them into the band and said, you guys are playing, and we're going to do this thing. If I can't get enough people to get serious about being in a band, I'm just going to raise my own. So... So was it always metal, like when you started, was it no, metal? No, um, it started out with a little bit of metal, but then when I lost everybody, I kind of went more acoustic as they were learning and things, so we did a lot of like acoustic folk rock style, and then as they started getting better, and uh, we just went into where God has us now. So. Wow. Yeah. So I saw you on stage, and like you totally ministered, like in between the songs. Like, like an evangelist ministry. <laughs> like how, how much of what you guys do do you consider ministry versus career? All of it. All, everything that we do, we do because this is what God has called us to do. 110% ministry. Um, we would not do what we were doing right now if God hadn't called us to do it. Um, we would not play a single note of music if we weren't playing it to glorify and honor Jesus Christ. Um, for us, this is our ministry. This, And to me, for Christians, all of us have a ministry that we should be doing every single day. And not like, oh, you should be preaching in a church. Oh, you should be in a band. Oh, you should be serving somewhere every day. Your life should be a ministry. And what God has called you to be, you know, to do and to be should be your ministry that you do every single day. And for us, this is just another extension of that, you know. So obviously you guys were raised in church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was not raised in church. Uh, he was kind of raised in church. We as sisters were raised in church, um, which is a testimony in itself because um, my mom and dad, I won't get into a lot of it, but my mom and dad um, were actually um, drug addicts and alcoholics when they were, you know, teenagers into their early 20s. And uh, we were the first kids out of like five generations to be born outside of the state of Arizona. Um, and God has just delivered and broken that generational curse over our lives of alcoholism and drug addiction and everything. And I can honestly say I'm 24 years old. She's 22. And uh, we've never had a drink of alcohol, never smoked a cigarette because God has delivered all of us from that. So I was going to ask that, like um, coming from drugs and alcohol, how did, how did you come to faith after that? Like how did that happen for you? Well, I was actually saved, like she was saying a little bit earlier, when I was 12 years old at church camp in northern Arizona. And... Uh, really on fire when I got saved and, and so when I got into drugs and I was into drugs I was so high on cocaine one night when I was 26 years old that uh, that I, I was in my room and it was dark and I had to turn the lights off because I was so high and I cried out to God that night because I'd lost everything and I even lost my girlfriend who is now my wife of 25 years um, I just lost everything I said God if you get me through this night I'll do what you want me to do and here we are so, you know, it's been a long road and a lot of changes, but we wanted our kids to have a better life than what we had. You know, sure, they're going to make mistakes in some of the same ones we did, but it, it's a, we just wanted them to have less problems in their life. So as they grow and their kids get to be older, they have less and less. So that's kind of where we came from. My wife, she, uh, she never went to church. I mean, literally, I, I tell a story on her about uh, watching a football game and the guy's holding a sign that says John 3.16. And she says, why is that idiot holding up a sign that says that? And who is John and what is 3.16? I mean, literally, she had no idea. So, you know, to be able to start from there and not know anything about church and just to grow in it was a huge, huge blessing for her. But, uh, yeah, uh, God just plucked us out of there and said, it's time to work for me. So... Yeah. <laughs> Jesus obviously um, can be glorified in any style of music. Like when you 
think a lot of people think Christian music, they automatically think of like contemporary Christian, you know, that kind of genre, Southern gospel, you know. But to me, just like there are different denominations of churches who, you know, can reach out and minister to different groups of people, also there are different genres of music. This is just the genre that God's given us to do. And watering it down would only be doing him an injustice, you know, and us an injustice by saying this is our ministry and then watering it down. Because um, in the words of Jimmy Needham, who's awesome, it says the living water won't quench us if it's watered down, you know. So if we uh, consistently water down our lyrics and make them interchangeable between, you know, this could work for a guy or for a girl or for God, just whatever you want to use it for, how is God glorified in that? How are we standing out? So then, like, when you were on stage, you talked about the one song about your friend yeah. who's cutting herself. Right. Like, you talked about that, like... Like, did she hear the song? Where is she now? Um, she has heard the song. Right after I wrote it, before um, we'd even finished writing the music to it, I just sent her the lyrics. And, um, you know, she's still at that place in her life. That's why the whole song is written. It's just because it's. I pray for her every time. I, I, that song is just an emotional thing for me every time we play it. And we play a lot of shows, you know, so to still get emotional is just because I know that while I'm singing that song, like, I'm praying for her because... And she knows. She's been at a show when I've told the story and knows the song is for her and written about her. And, and it's okay because she also knows that she needs Jesus, you know. And I think the more time she hears that, she said, I'm not offended by what you said because every bit of it is true, you know. And she still, um, you know, when she was 14, you know, she was cutting herself every night, you know. And she would get upset about that and then she would try to control her life by being bulimic or anorexic and thought that she could be in control that way. And, and she didn't. She didn't ever find joy or happiness until she gave her life to Christ when she was a senior in high school. Um, spring break that year, something happened. I don't know what it is. She probably doesn't even know what it is. Um, but something happened, and she completely fell away from the arms of Christ. I mean, just ran as far as she could run. And now, she's a little bit older than I am. Next month, she'll be 25. And she gets drunk for days at a time, and we'll brag about it. Uh, she sleeps with as many people as she can find. Uh, she still cuts herself on a regular basis to the extent that she literally cannot wear anything shorter than basketball shorts because she has hundreds of scars on her legs. Um, she does as many drugs, any kind, doesn't care, doesn't matter what it is. And, um, you know, she is not, the whole point of that song is that she has not gone far enough away from God that his arms are not long enough to reach her. That literally, if she feels far away from God, or if anybody listening to this feels far away from God, it is not because he went anywhere. It's because we did. We turned our back, we walked away. He's still there waiting for us, arms wide open. And so that's basically what that song is about, just talking about all she needs to do is just turn around and run back to the place where she was and where she, the only place in her life where she's ever had true joy and happiness. So then, um, your latest project, is a self-titled EP, Light Up the Darkness. So can you kind of tell me the overall theme of it? Um, basically right now, um, the theme of that is just, it's Jesus. And <laughs> it's always Jesus. For us, um, we feel like a lot of our ministry is um, to the church and to other bands. Um, just because I think that so much for us anymore, um, the church has gotten away from being the church. And now we go to a church instead of being the church. You know what I mean? We forget to be the hands and feet of Christ and be the church to people. And we just tell them to go to church. Or we think we're okay as long as we're going to church on Sunday morning. And uh, basically, I think if I were to think of a theme as just um, giving everything to Jesus and just focusing on that and being his hands and feet to other people and just realizing that our lives are just a constant battle um, in spiritual warfare and not like against each other and just um, being hands and feet for those who need them. For kids who, uh, who love your music, they come to these shows but they don't know, don't know Christ or maybe they watch but they don't know Christ, what would you have to say to those kids? Um, to those kids, I it almost makes me emotional just to think about it. Um, if you could only understand a love that Christ has for you, and it's so much bigger and better than anything you could ever imagine on your own. Um, if I could say anything at all, if any of us could say anything at all, we would never, ever play music again if God told us to stop tomorrow or if it started to be something that was about us. And um, just... If you know someone who is a Christian, or if you don't know anybody else that's a Christian besides us, send us a personal email. Send, you know, get on messages right on our Facebook. We would love, love, love to talk to you about who Jesus is, how he drastically changed our lives, and how he can change yours, no matter what your situation or where you are. Christ loves you. So, Facebook. It's 
It's uh, Facebook.com slash Light Up The Darkness Band. If you go to LightUpTheDarkness.com, it's got links to all of our Facebook, Spotify, Pandora, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Um, our merch store, everything there. So ways you can contact us, things like that. So, so are you guys involved in other ministries besides the music? We are. Gosh. <laughs> That's a lot um, of us. We have, uh, yeah. uh, we have a youth outreach center that uh, we play at on Wednesdays and Sundays when we're home and not out on the road called Freedom. Props to all our peeps out there. We love you guys. Um, they are at home right now. We miss them. It's a youth outreach center that basically um, we reach out to the kids that um, are like, yeah, that are like tough to love. You know what I mean? And y'all Freedom peeps, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but they're basically like the kids who have like dropped out of school early or you know who um, were just in and out of like juvenile hall you know those are the kids that we minister to and can relate to the most just because of our experiences and what we've been through Uh, we also run a free store ministry um, that's near our town that we live in um, called the free store and uh, basically it's a huge 5400 square foot building that um just gives out anybody in need. It bases it off the scripture of in Acts where it says that all the believers shared in everything and none of them were in need. So um, we give out food, we give out household supplies, clothing, carpet, furniture, whatever you can imagine. It's all supported by 100% donation of volunteer labor. You know, so anything that anybody needs, they come in. There's no like, you know. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Income requirements. We don't ask people, you know, do you really need this before they come in? Because Christ said, you know, feed those who are hungry, clothe those who need clothes. He didn't say make sure they fit the requirements first, you know. So that that and, gosh, a million other things that just are all a part of that and bundled in together. Who is Jesus? I mean, mean, Jesus is love. Jesus is the Son of God and, and God in the flesh. You know, Jesus is reason for living. He's a sacrifice that saved us from the terrible sinful lives we lived before and I mean he's everything really. I mean that answer could go on forever if you allow me to, which I know you don't have the time for but I mean I'll leave it at Jesus is is everything. As the weeping prophet my tears still fall not unlike my words upon 